Hello and welcome to Sound Librarian. My name is Stefan Schutz. Now you may already have seen the video for System Shock 2 that came out in 1999. I'm going to talk about another game that came out in 1999, which was also very, very significant for different reasons, but also very, very significant. Another game for PC, and that game is Homeworld. Now, you've got to understand that you need to look at these games in the context of when they came out. I showed Homeworld to some people recently and they were like, yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting. The graphics are okay. You need to realize and understand that when this game came out nearly 15 years ago, the graphics in this game were absolutely gobsmacking. People were looking at this game and almost weeping because compared to everything else, the graphics were just stunning. So this is something that's really worth, it's like watching an old movie. If you watch Citizen Kane, sure, the production values perhaps aren't as good as a, uh, as a movie that's been made in the last few years. Perhaps the lighting's not as good, perhaps the costume's not as good, perhaps the acting is even a little bit, you know, um, different in style. But if you watch it in the context of when it was made, it's very significant. Homeworld is the same. Now, some other significant things about Homeworld was the use of the music. The particular main theme that they used was actually a piece of classical music written by Samuel Barber called the Adagio for Strings. The team at Relic decided to use this particular piece of music, but they adapted it for vocals. This is very, very significant. It was actually quite a good decision. The piece of music is outstanding, and it really, really sets the scene for what's going on in this game. 100 years ago, a satellite detected an object under the sands of the Great Desert. An expedition was sent. Homeworld has An ancient starship some outstanding elements to it. Visually, even now, but at, its, at the time it was released, visually it was and is stunning. The design was amazing and the gameplay was very, very impressive. From a narrative point of view, it has some really lovely pacing. And this opening sequence is a very good example of that. They're quite happy to take the time that they require to really give this story a sense of presence. The slow transitions, the slow narrative dialogue, the really drawn out crossfades and fades to black in places. I think all work so well in establishing what type of a game this is. Homeworld from the very, very outset was a game of massive scope, a the narrative of lighted, massive, massive scope, and technologically a game of massive scope. So even though it can take some time to get into, I think it's really utilized something that uh, the game industry possibly doesn't do enough of, it and that's take its time new to allow a narrative to be formed to be reinforced and to be presented. The greatest of these was made by the scientist Karen Sajet, who had herself permanently integrated into the colony The ship use of the black and white here as an introduction core. is also very clever. She is now Fleet And you'll see why when we get into the main game. The promise of the Guide Stone united the entire population. Every mind became focused on the true origin of our people. Every effort on the construction of the ship that would seek it out among the stars. Thank you. 
This is Fleet Command. Reporting Mothership pre-launch status. Command online. Resourcing online. Construction online. Cryogenic subsections A through J online. K through S online. Scaffold control, stand by for alignment. Alignment confirmed. Stand by, release control. Mothership has cleared the scaffold. We are away. Stand by for command line testing. And that was truly one of the greatest openings for a video game that has ever been produced. The use of the choral music was inspired. The original piece of music uh, is written by Samuel Barber, and it's called Adagio for Strings. I can't really imagine it being used in a better way in a game. And the impact that this game had when it came out was very significant. Hyperspace module charging. And you can see here why the black and white introduction was so significant as well. Because we now have just such an incredibly vibrant game to be looking at visually. And when it was released in 1999, it was quite literally jaw-dropping. Now what's interesting is that the choice of using a piece of classical music was very, very interesting. And you could argue perhaps it was just being lazy, you know, stealing somebody else's music. Except for the fact that every other piece of music in this game is so beautifully written that in general the score for Homeworld in all its ways, all the original music for Homeworld 2 is stunning. Whether it be the atmospheric type of music that we have here or some of the more action oriented music that we'll hear later on. The positional, 3D positional sound of the vehicles and objects within this world are done so well that it really, really just creates a tight sense of the environment in which you are experiencing this game. This was the first fully 3D uh, RTS game as well. And so the sound in this game could have been a disaster having so many things going on in massive battles in space in a 3D environment could have been terrible, except they did such a wonderful job that it is instead just a really fine example of excellent sound design, but excellent sound design from not just the creation of the sound effects, although it is that, but from how those sound effects were implemented and how the whole thing was mixed together. When you're this close in, you can hear the individual cannons of the ships that you're controlling and of course their engine sounds but very quickly as you move away you're left with nothing but the ambience of the music which really really highlights the the scope of space and in some ways the isolation of space as well hyperspace module fully charged I am ready to initiate quantum wave generation on your mark. Good luck, everyone. All sections have reported in. We are clear to proceed. 
Trigger the hyperspace drive at your discretion. So the story of this is really quite interesting as well, because we're all talking about this civilization's first big opportunity to advance into space travel. This is their first ever hyperspace test. And so you can almost feel the excitement of what's going on. Hyperspace initiated. All hyperspace systems operating at full power. If the hyperspace targeting system is accurate, we will emerge in close proximity to the support vessel cars. Now, I'll make a note here before the hyperspace jump happens, in that we've had it explained to us that the female voice is part of the ship's system. She is, I guess, half computer now. The male voice, I believe, is the captain, who is human. However, when we finish the hyperspace jump, pay close attention to the female voice's reaction. I want to take note of her emotional response when they come out of hyperspace, because I find this is quite significant to something I'm going to point out later on. All ships auto-launching. We made it. Hyperspace jump complete. All systems nominal and the quantum wave effect has dissipated. We have missed jumped. The support ship is not here. Fleet command will signal the car Salim while we confirm our current position. This is the mothership calling support vessel car Salim. Come in please. We have missed jumped and are requesting your beacon. This is the mothership calling support vessel Kar Salim. Please respond. Priority alert. We have picked up the Kar Salim's automated beacon. Send a probe to make contact and re-establish communications. Uh, I will say that the interface sounds in this game are also very, very good. The hum sound when you go in and out of the scripted sequences um, the general interface sounds, um, even that sort of repetitive beep when you're in the tactical screen. They're all very suitable, they're all very subtle. They fit well within the style of the game. Probe complete. Probe deployed. Group 5 designated. This is the point where the entire dynamic of the game changes. We've seen that our support vessel has been destroyed. We have unidentified ships coming in. And this is our first example of a more action-based piece of music. And a lot of the action-based music in this has uh, 
I would say, just a Middle Eastern feel to it, in the type of rhythms that it's used. I don't know if there's a specific culture that it's come from, and I apologise if there is a specific culture that I've not picked up on, but the action music in general has a really good flavour to it. And so we go through the regular RTS type format of combat, assigning orders, controlling your units, and making sure that you are protecting the thing that you are supposed to protect. Commencing combat drive research. Hyperspace engaged. Analysis of wreckage reveals the hostile units are using strike craft ranging from fighters to combat corvettes. All pilots will be briefed in case hostiles have penetrated farther into the Karak system. On our return to Karak, the final outfit of the mothership must be accelerated in order to defend against possible future attacks. Many major mothership systems are still incomplete. We will notify Karak's missile defense system of this possible threat. The mothership will then dock with the scaffold for repairs. Stand by for hyperspace exit to Karak. All ships auto launching. No one's left. Everything's gone. Karak is burning. Karak is being consumed by a firestorm. The scaffold has been destroyed. All orbital facilities destroyed. Significant debris ring in low Karak orbit. Receiving no communication from anywhere in the system. Not even beacons. Wait, on the maintenance frequency, I'm getting a signal from the cryotray systems in orbit. One of them is suffering a massive malfunction. The cryotrays are under attack. Defend them. Now here's where I need to be critical about Homeworld. And it saddens me a little bit because I really, really loved so much about this game. These ships are different from those we encountered this the is... This could have been one of the most significant narrative events ever in a computer game. The choice of music was absolutely perfect. The circumstances were not expected. You've arrived back to find your entire race has been wiped out. And yet, the reaction from the voice actors was not even remotely convincing. Now, yes, we understand that the female voice is part computer, but we've had a couple of examples already of her surprise when the first hyperspace jump succeeds. So we know she can show and feel emotions. And the male voice is supposedly of a human captain. And yet both of them report the utter destruction of their species as though they're talking about a bad traffic report. And in fact, even when they report that these objects here are under attack. These are the last remaining remnants of their entire species who are under attack. And you were ordered, oh, destroy them. I, I'm, I was so disappointed in this because the, um, the amount of emotional impact that could have been expressed by the two voice actors and the way it was written should have had every person playing this game in tears. Th this piece of music, in my mind, is the saddest piece of music that has ever been written by a human being. And until somebody displays to me another piece of music on the same level, I will always hold that belief. 
So to have a piece of music that has been used so successfully to support an emotion of sadness and loss and a situation narratively that is so perfect for this piece of music to then be let down by reasonable voice acting but not voice acting that quite literally should have had you just feeling so devastated by the circumstances is where for me this game that was so close to being perfect just missed at the last hurdle now i am being super critical here i mean this whole circumstance and this game and the narrative is very good but for the want of two or three lines of dialogue just lacking the emotional impact that they could have had i really think this game could have gone down in in history and it will go down in history as being a very significant game but i think it could have gone down in history as being the game that basically just opened everybody's eyes to what game narrative could be about so from that point of view, it does sadden me that it just just wasn't quite there. And it, here I'm just letting this play out because the piece of music is beautiful. And the, the, the choice of the choir is inspired. And the visual style is wonderful. But they just missed that last bit that would have made it just outstanding. So this is why Homeworld for me is significant, because it achieved so much, and yet it was so close to going that next level and just didn't quite get it. Hostile vessel captured. Crew interned. Interrogation is underway. While searching the enemy ship's computer systems, we came across these flight recordings. Stand by for playback. All right, so um, not everything is perfect about Homeworld. But this is also a reason why it's significant. There are some things in there that are worth noting because of ways in which they perhaps could have been done better. But overall... Um, this had a significant impact at the time um, for all of its production values, and Relic have gone on to make extremely good games um, from, from that point onwards. It was certainly a very, very good start for a company. So, Homeworld, very, very good game, very significant game. Check it out, and thank you for watching.